ESPN 1420 exclusive here with sophomore pitcher Gunnar Leger. And pre-warning, he has teammates trying to mess with him behind the camera. First question for you, Gunnar. Uh, you were the Friday starter your first year on campus. How do you try to stay humble and focused with all that pressure? Uh, I mean, I wouldn't really consider that pressure. Um, I mean, last year I just came in and tried to be the guy that everyone could trust. Uh, I know the, the position players want a guy they can trust on the field that's going to give the team a chance to win. Um, and honestly, th there's there's we got five guys that could be the Friday night starter. So um, I'm just going to go out, try and throw strikes, and give the team a chance to win, and whatever happens, happens. Now, Coach Robe asked you to pitch a lot and deep into games. Do you see yourself as a workhorse on the mound? Um, I mean, I, I just go out there and throw until Coach tells me I'm done. Uh, I, if I could, I would try and throw all nine. Um, but obviously, that can't happen every game. Uh, but, I mean, I, again, I'm just out there until he tells me I can't go out anymore. Has there been a moment where robes come out to get you off the mound where you almost wanted to just send him back? Like, go back. I'm not ready yet. Uh, yeah, there's been plenty of times in the dugout where I told him that, no, I'm not done yet. I'm not done. There, there's, also, there's also been a few times where I've kind of run out of gas and I've been like, that's it. Now, you know, I'm flowing in the white towel. So. All right, now, what's better, collecting a strikeout or watching your teammates turn a double play behind you? Oh, uh, Probably a double play because it's two outs instead of one. And I, usually when, if, it's a, if it's a routine, I can start walking off the field. And I guess it looks kind of cool when I'm walking off the field and they're turning the double play, kind of like an alley-oop, LeBron James, Dwayne Wade type deal. And look at that, look at that baseball math. Two, two outs is better than one. Yeah. Right, and do, you have, do you have a best friend on the team? If so, who is it? Uh, I mean, Kenan, I, mean, I've grown up, I grew up with Kenan my whole life. We went to the same high school, played together since we were T-ball, six, seven years old. I mean, I guess you could call him my best friend just because I've been around him the most. But, I mean, I, I love all the guys that are like the brothers I never had. So, All the other pitchers have told me Stefan Trostclair is really hard to throw to. Who's another guy on this team that's really hard to throw to in practice? Uh, Stefan's definitely hard to throw. I would say Kyle Clement. Uh, he kind of sets up across his body, so he covers the outside part real well. But his hands, his hands are quick, man, so he can get to the inside pitch. Uh, he's disciplined. He, I, I would say he's, tough to, he's pretty tough to get out as well. You came in as a freshman, like I said, and you started, but you had Coach Robe leading you, and you had Nick Thurman behind the plate. Talk a little bit about how much of a luxury it was to have Thurm with you, helping you, not, not to literally hold your hand, but to help guide you through this. Yeah, no, uh, Nick definitely helped all of us last year. Nick made it a lot easier on everybody. Uh, he's going to make it a lot easier on all these freshmen this year, Nick Lee, Hogan Harris. Jacob Norman, all the guys. Um, and he'll help, again, he'll help us this year. He's going to be... It's going to suck when he leaves. Um, he's, he's a leader behind the plate. You always like having that, that fifth-year senior behind the plate. There are tons of awesome stories about Tony show. Can you recall a single moment where you were, like, amazed by something that he said or when you caught a lesson that you're going to remember for the rest of your life? Um, whew, man, he, he gives lessons every day. I mean, he, he says stuff, stuff sometimes, and you're just like, how do you – like, he'll make analogies, and you just don't even know where he pulled that from. Um, I mean, there's the life lessons are countless. Um, the, I mean, he has some great quotes. Probably his best quote ever is after the uh, regional game in Houston when he said that if the world was in and you'd find Will Bacon sitting in his chair drinking coffee and reading a newspaper. That's probably his best one, especially knowing Bacon being around him. That was pretty uh, on point. All right, and uh, how do you top what you did last year personally and as a team? Um, I mean, personally for me, it's not about me. I mean, I can't go win the games by myself. Um, I, mean, I worked hard this off season. I mean, I'm gonna try and do the same thing every game I go out, and I try and give the team an opportunity to win. Uh, that's what Coach Robe wants. So that's what I try and do. And uh, I mean, team-wise, uh, I mean, the past few years, obviously tough to uh, tough to accomplish two straight super regionals. Obviously, the goal is Omaha every year, um, but I think we're gonna take it. Obviously, the regular season right now, try and get off to a hot start. Last season, we didn't get off to a hot start. You know, 15 and 12 at the midway point was not what obviously what nobody would want. Um, so I think we got to get off to a good start and keep rolling. And I mean, the goal right now is to try and win the regular season conference championship, take on the conference tournament, and then regional, super regional Omaha. So now, time for a little bit of fun. You played with Tyler Girard last year, and now he's a member of the coaching staff. Which Shug talks more, player Shug or coach Shug? Oh man, I would probably say, Co I'd probably say coach Shug, because um, player Shug. Player Shug in the game, he's focused, man. He may be, he may clown around outside, but when he's in the game, he's focused. He's ready to play. But Coach Shug, as he walks up over here, he can be a clown at times. Uh, but he ma he makes practice fun for us, and he's an awesome guy to have around. All right, 
How would how would you grade Coach Babs' classic rock playlist that he plays at practice? Good, bad? Where are you at on that? Uh, uh, well, I've heard some of these songs probably, I don't know, going on a thousand times now in the past two years. But, I mean, they're good songs, and he has fun with them. If you ever walk around him, he'll be singing them. So at least he's enjoying them. Um, but at least he's enjoying them. All right, Gunner. You have a you have a favorite movie? Something you got in the, in the bank that if there's nothing else on, you always pull it out. No oh, favorite movie. I, I, I'm not. I'm mean, not like Wedding Crashers. I guess that's kind of. I don't know if that's inappropriate for. Oh no, that's not. That's not. Man's like man's man's a Vince Vaughn fan. Man's a Vince Vaughn fan. All right. Uh, and now last one. Yeah, favorite book? Did you, were you a reader when you were growing up? Uh, no, I, I'm not really a reader. I don't. I don't really enjoy reading that much. The Book of Baseball for Gunnar Leje. All right. Now last one. If you couldn't, if you couldn't play baseball, what would you do? I would like to be good at golf, man. Golf, they just, they golfers got it made. Jordan Spieth, what is he, 22? He's a multi-millionaire. He's got a great house, and he just goes around the world and plays golf for days on end and gets paid. So, Gunner Leger, if he's not striking people out, he might see him on the golf course. <laughs> Thanks, and have a good luck and good season, Gunner. Yep, appreciate it.